Yeah, so I <laughs> I want you guys to know that they are very funny and they be trying to act quiet, but they're not. <laughs> Especially this one. She really tries to act like she's quiet, but I be hearing her on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to count me out. I'ma go count me in. Fill up my bank account. Now I got something to spend. Uh, I want to see me break dance. You were even with me. Mia. I mean, I, I feel like every day it's light, and I, I get to walk into the gym with people that I enjoy every single day. You know, if it is a, a tough day or a rough day, you know, you always have, you know, 11 other people cheering you on, you know, wanting to make you smile. If you walk in just a little bit, not like yourself, like, are you okay? Are you, like, is everything good? So, really, it's just a, a family atmosphere. I think it just makes me appreciate the dream now this year so much just because it really is such a healthy place from the top down. And everyone is great. There's not one person that sticks out like absolutely everyone is a great person that makes our jobs a lot easier because they care so much for us and they put so much work into us so that we can be our best. So I'm really excited to see where this place is headed because it's just the only beginning. I'm a scheduled early, so I put everything in my schedule. When I'm off the clock, I'm off the clock, but I'm making sure I'm still taking care of my body. And um, I just, I'm really good at boundaries. I set my boundaries, I stick to them. A lot of my friends and family, they understand that. I'm so thankful and blessed that they understand. It took me a while to get there, but it's my seventh year, so I kind of figured it out. Um, when I committed, I knew that I was coming into something that was bigger than myself and just embracing the culture of, you know, the South and coming into and just having people that literally embrace me every day. Just having that type of support system and then carrying over to professionals, I think it just makes it the transition a lot easier for me. I had two older brothers, so those were like really my life. I was a tomboy. I like to run around and, and be rough with them and um, just kind of be around that environment. That's kind of how my childhood was. I actually played soccer for most of my life. Um, my parents are from Ivory Coast and Ghana, so two of the biggest soccer countries in pretty much the world. So I played soccer and then I just was way too tall. And then I was kind of recruited to play basketball um, later on in life. Um, my childhood, I have an older sister and younger brother. We're all about two years apart, so we would just make up games around the house and just do silly things together. And I was really into like math and science, and, like rocks when I was younger, so you could just catch me outside like collecting some stuff. But overall, it was, it was really cool. I started basketball after my brother and sister did around like the fourth, fifth grade, so I just kind of fell into it because they did. I have a younger brother. He also plays basketball. He's right now, he's playing for the Clippers. I think he's in his like third or fourth year professionally. So my sister did play a couple years and then my brother, we, we are still playing right now. So honestly, we rely on each other more on like the mental side of things, just the different demands that comes with this lifestyle that maybe people don't understand or they just can't empathize with. Not so much with like the X and L's of basketball, just more of like how we're doing as people. As a kid, um, I feel like that's forever ago, but it's really not. Every day was was different, full of excitement. I grew up in a blended family, so there was just a lot of personalities floating around the house, but we always played together. Like, I feel like I remember going outside a lot, um, but I didn't really need like other friends because I had so many people in my house. Blended house, full of adventures. We been playing basketball for so long and, you know, for a long time we were playing it solely because we loved it and, and now it's like you love it and it's and it's your job. And sometimes that can become hard. Hey, I saw some jokes on TikTok the other day and I was like, I'm gonna remember these for when I get mic'd up. And... and you're going to work every day. So just trying to find ways to keep things lighthearted, you know, to to make the the vets feel a little bit younger, trying to put them in our TikToks, which coming soon, Nia will be in one of our TikToks. <laughs> sometimes we make jokes, sometimes we make t-shirts with people's faces on it. It just kind of depends um, and just really trying to bring that, that light heartedness every day. I have a nonprofit that kind of just serves in providing access through sports and underserved communities. So that's always been my passion, just working in sports and 
especially you know i'm from west africa and that's something that i carry along with me a lot you know my instagram username is the black queen so a lot of people know me as that and just Carrying my roots is something that I'm very passionate about. I'm also passionate about social justice. A lot of things that I did in college pertaining to that, I was in a coalition and then also heart health. That's really important to me and just like trying to find ways to be in support. You know, 2020 was a time where we all got a chance to just sit and watch and, and really think and reflect um, on, you know, what kind of is shaping this world, our country, um, the spaces that we live in. So it gave, I mean, someone like me the confidence to continue to speak up stepping outside of my comfort zone sometimes and really making sure that I'm not solely basketball. You find that it becomes your identity. It, you find that that becomes the only thing that you're doing. It's finding time to do things outside of and whatever logo you, you had in college anymore. Like it's, it's just completely different. You're kind of not completely separating who you were, but making sure that, you know, you're taking the pieces that you feel like is that you're a part of and then also bringing something new with you. I think I've been blessed in a way where I kind of understood my identity a lot earlier. I've learned to hold on to things a little bit more loose. Everything I do, like I said, is a gift. Standing that my identity isn't wrapped into my sport. Sport is something that is kind of a stepping stone into everything else I do. So sport has allowed me to meet amazing people, travel the world, is build a nonprofit. So kind of using my basketball as a gift. I haven't been in a situation for years now where I'm like, I don't know who I am outside of basketball. It took me until about my fifth year to understand what that looks like for me. Identity did come from playing basketball and that's not, that's not stable, that's not suitable for being your identity. So when I found my identity in Christ, my, my confidence came from him. So no matter what happens, I'm good, he's stable. So I'm, I'm rocking with him. So it's been great ever since then. With our profession, you don't get to dress up a ton. I feel like sometimes you feel like you're just in sweats too often. So I feel like for me, the drip wall is just a chance to show my personality a little bit off the court and not in sweats. And then me and Rai try to coordinate to kind of make our pictures look a little bit better so they're not, you know, two completely opposites. But I think that's fun, just kind of brainstorming what we're gonna wear that day. I think I like to show off my length. Uh in terms of being an athlete and a lot of people struggle with just your height. People don't like wearing heels or they don't like wearing certain things. I think that's just developed over my years, just being more confident in myself. I just always want to be a model and just like wear clothes that just make me um, express myself and express my, my height. I'm not really a fashion girly at all. So if, is it quick? Can I, is it easy to pack? Like the fewer the better for me, so. DJ and Tupac, Andre 3000, where is Erica Badu at? Who that, who that said they gon' be Lil Wayne? My name Just put my phone on shuffle and whatever comes up, comes up. Um, so it's like a complete shuffle, not just like my hip hop shuffle, like it's anything. So it can go from like sad to like country, if I have any of those in there, to like gospel. So it's a, it's a wide range of, of things. I'm a big young boy fan. <laughs> I think I just need to be pumped by anger. So I definitely listen to a lot of, <laughs> listen to a lot of NBA young boy. Um, I would say I love Miles Minnick. I love No Big Deal, Juan Day, uh, KB. I just, those are some of my favorite artists. Our fans are great. It's an amazing energy. And one thing that I really appreciate about our fans is like they really do know us. We just got gifts after our last game from some of our fans and they were individualized gifts to what like we're interested in. And that just shows us how much like they're really invested in us and just all the love that we, we receive from them. I would definitely describe the culture as lit. Like it's just an experience. Like it's really Atlanta. Like you're gonna experience Atlanta like at our games. Culture, everything that's comprised of it, it's just a great experience. I mean, it's it's really cool. I feel like we're one of the few cities that have basically all of the the major the major sports teams here. Um, and then going to their to the other games, I mean, I feel like we have we still have the best fans. But seeing the other fans, you know, whether that's the United Games or the Braves, and then they also come in to support us. So it's just nice to kind of have that that connection and to be able to see, and then them also coming out to support. I'm Neon. I'm Leticia. I'm Nas. And, and we're, we're made, made for, for the A. A.